If you walk up to just a regular person on the street and ask them what's the cause of bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, I'm sure a lot of them are going to tell you that it's an incurable condition caused by a chemical imbalance, an imbalance that comes from having some kind of faulty genes or DNA, and it's something that runs in families. To put it bluntly, the problems are biological in nature, and the only thing we can do about them is take meds for life. This is a story that's been told to the public by psychiatry for decades, and one which we have bought hook, line, and sinker. But then, in May of this year, 2013, an earthquake shook the world of psychiatry. Newspapers and magazines that normally never pay any attention to psychiatry were shocked to discover that the American National Institute of Mental Health was no longer supporting the American Psychiatric Association's Bible of Mental Illness, the DSM. And this was happening just two weeks before the newly revised and highly controversial DSM-5 was about to be released. To quote Thomas Insel, the director of the NIMH, Unlike our definitions of heart disease, lymphoma, or AIDS, the DSM diagnoses are based on a consensus about clusters of clinical symptoms, not any objective laboratory measure. Finally, the NIMH was openly admitting to what many critics like Robert Whitaker, author of Anatomy of an Epidemic, had been saying for years, that the DSM lacks validity. You see, here's the thing. The disease or illness psychiatry refers to is only a set of behavioral symptoms. When someone is paranoid or has delusions of grandeur, for example, there is certainly something happening. Nobody can deny that. The only trouble is, psychiatry can't find the origins of these symptoms or any other mental disorder. It's not like cancer, where you can actually see the cells with a microscope, or diabetes, which can be detected with a blood test. There isn't a single disorder in the DSM which leaves a biological trace. But what about the dopamine and the serotonin levels? Surely they can be tested. And yes, they can. And what the credible research proves is that people with mental disorders have serotonin and dopamine levels that are completely normal until they start taking medication. Everything else you've been told about the chemical imbalance theory is pure myth. So by now, you might think that the NIMH was on to a new leading-edge paradigm for how we will help people with mental disorders in the future. But no. In the same statement where he discredits the DSM-5, Thomas Insel goes on to say, Mental disorders are biological disorders involving brain circuits that implicate specific domains of cognition, emotion, or behavior. But then... Just a paragraph later, he writes, It became immediately clear that we cannot design a system based on biomarkers or cognitive performances because we lack the data. What? From what I can remember from my grade 9 science class, a fact is not a fact until you've got the data. Unless you can measure something with an instrument, science needs to assume that it does not exist. In this case, if there are no scientific means of detecting that mental disorders like schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or depression are biological diseases, then we need to assume otherwise. Now, obviously embarrassed, the American Psychiatric Association needed to respond with some sort of reply, and so they did, with this gem. We've been telling patients for several decades that we are waiting for biomarkers. We're still waiting. So if you're confused about your disorder, you should be. Psychiatry has been playing a shell game with you for so long that they can't even separate fact from fiction. So why continue with this game of insisting that mental disorders are biological when they still have no proof? Well, many people in the anti-psychiatry movement would have you believe that it's a result of the influence of Big Pharma and all of the money that's involved. But if that were the only answer, it would still not explain why so many regular people staunchly defend psychiatric medications insisting on the biological model without a shred of evidence. While I don't deny the influence of Big Pharma, I see psychiatry as being so successful mainly because its mythic theories and medications fit perfectly into modern consciousness. People are easily led to believe that mental disorders come from genetics because based on a scientific materialist worldview, where else would they come from? 
Like all myths, it's a simple, easy response to a question which, at this level of consciousness, is impossible to answer. So you see, what we're up against here is not a battle against science, but modern scientism. The belief that everything and anything can be explained with scientific explanations, even when there are none to be found. In this way, I don't see psychiatrists as corrupt liars who are simply out for the money. They're more like high priests of a religious belief system. And in truth, I'd much rather have my priests tell me that I've got a chemical imbalance than tell me that I'm being possessed by the devil. The medications themselves fit modern consciousness as well. Despite the difficult long-term side effects, psych meds have proven themselves useful in suppressing undesirable states of mind. They help people hold down jobs, raise families, stay out of the psychiatric hospital, and even stay out of jail. So in my opinion, psychiatry will continue to play a huge role in our society, at least until postmodern cultural transformation is complete. And a big part of that transformation means encouraging our world to face the facts. That psychiatry has no idea where mental disorders originate and has no idea how to heal them. Now, does this mean that mental disorders have nothing to do with our genetics or biochemistry? Not exactly. First of all, waves of biochemical changes are happening within us all the time. And there certainly must be some sort of biochemical shift during acute psychosis, just no permanent, untreatable dysfunction. Second, I fully expect that one day science will discover that certain genetic patterns lead to a higher or lower probability for mental instability. Everybody knows that people with bipolar disorder are highly creative and often emotionally sensitive. My experience online has convinced me that writers, singers, actors, artists, and musicians are much more likely to suffer from mental distress than, say, mechanical engineers, bankers, and accountants. And by that time, regardless of the genetics involved, I also expect people not to view bipolar disorder as a dangerous mental illness, but as an opportunity for profound transformation of the mind, body, and soul.